Welcome to Gaby's Knit Goodies. I am Gaby and um, I have a little bit of knitting to talk about today. I, it's been a while um, since I podcasted here. We went on a family trip. Um, we rented an RV because we figured that would be the um, best way to clean it once and then to be our little home for the week. And we went and visited some outside natural um, wonders. And we had a lot of fun. It was um, it was exhausting and a bit stressful for us as adults, but the kids absolutely loved the fact that they got to ride in the RV and basically be in the living room while we're doing the long hours on the road. So that was really fun. And the fact that we didn't have to pack up out of a hotel room and stuff doing a road trip like that, um, it worked out pretty well. Um, I think the most stress, uh, stressful person in our trip would probably be my husband because he was the one who had to drive the whole thing. But um, all in all, it turned out well and I'll show a few pictures up here. And I forgot to mention in the beginning, um, again, my name is Gaby, Gaby's Goodies on Instagram and Ravelry, and um, Gaby's Night Goodies here, of course. And I have some patterns for sale. Um, this is one of them, the Elizabeth Bennett Linen Tea, um, that is on both my Ravelry store and uh, on loveknitting.com. So you can find it there, and it's nice and lightweight and summery and uses the Lindy Chain yarn from Knit Picks, and this is the linen color. Um, I'll show a full picture of it here and maybe some of those that um, some people who have recently knit it up. I actually really want to rework this pattern, so if anybody is interested in knitting it in the future um, as a test, I want to expand my size ranges. Um, for this pattern, so can be looking out for that in the future. It'll probably be a little while. Um, school is going to be starting soon, and I homeschool the kids, so that takes um, a good amount of my time. <laughs> so I guess the um, I'll just jump right into my big knitting project. I last time you heard me, or last time I was here on the podcast. I was talking about which sweater that I wanted to knit with my um, set of yarns by Zen Garden Yarns that I got on Zulily. And it's a set of seven different colors, um, about 200 grams each. And this is what I currently have left. So they've definitely shrunk a good bit because I have been very monogamous, which is not usually my knitting style. So last time you saw me, I just had balls of yarn. And now, I almost have a completed sweater. I did choose the Ladyfinger sweater. Um, I forget the person who wrote it, her name, um, the pattern writer. I will definitely put it up here and also um, probably link down below. Um, and this is it. I need to make my pretty flowers so you can see it. Isn't it pretty? I really like the color combination. I think it's very interesting and fun without being like um, bright in a primary color way. The yellow is definitely the brightest 
pop of color in the whole thing. But I think it turned out really cute. And because I had seven colors, I just rotated them through. Um, I think her pattern calls for five. But I don't think that really made any difference. Um, it's very simple. It is all over color work, but it is super simple. So you knit, it's a top down um, yoked sweater, knit in the round. Um, you hold stitches under the arm, um, or you bind off stitches under the arm and then hold the stitches for the sleeves and then you pick those back up and work those last. And she has a short sleeve and a long sleeve version. I'm trying to do the long sleeve version, but I don't have a lot of yarn left in some of these. Some of them I have more than others. Um, but because of that, we'll see how far I get. So I did one set of colors on this side and then I stopped and worked on the other one. And now I'm continuing on because I think I have enough to do all of the colors again, which would bring me to a full length sleeve, which is my ideal end result. So you have these sections where it's just a three by three um, color work and just with the two colors. And then you have um, fairly long sections in between those that's just stocking mitt, and you just um, change your yarn in between. And so it's this chunk that just gets repeated over and over again. And then because I have the an odd number of colors, like the first half has like this dark color with the color work with the yellow, but then down here, the dark color is in color work with the one before that, and then just butts up against with a solid change there to the yellow. So I think it's kind of interesting how those, even though they're in the same order, it changes the color work just a little bit from the top to the bottom. Um, these two colors don't have a lot of contrast. So you don't see the color work quite as drastically as you do here, which you kind of like the fact that you don't see the rectangles um, equally bright all over the sweater. I kind of like that. She has a little bit of short rows in the back to bring up the back of the neck. And, oh, so you know this was a, I think a worsted weight pattern and I am knitting it out of fingering weight yarn. I was concerned about that, but I thought I could make it work. And in terms of the fabric, I used the, the needles that were recommended. I think they were a six. Nope, a five. Wait a minute. Let me see what... Yes, a six. <laughs> this one's just holding my sleeve. Um, so the knitting needles required are a six, and that is what I used. It still um, probably is going to turn out smaller gauge than what she has, which is fine. I knit a size three, and my guess is it will its finished dimensions are going to be a one or a two, not a size three. But I think that's going to work out fine. I have not blocked it. Um, and I did make it kind of crop because I was worried about running out of um, yarn, but it's not blocked. So it and it's super wash merino, so I know it will grow. So right now it comes like to my waistband, just a couple inches below my belly button, which is not that bad. But I do think it will grow after I block it. So there it is. What do you guys think? I like it and I think that the colors will work well in the fall. So I'm excited for fall to arrive and um, to wear it. Yay! Let me know if you guys knit this sweater. I'd love to see what you guys do too. 
Um, the only other thing that I've been working on, knitting-wise, like I said, I was totally monogamous with this, which is really weird for me. Usually I have a bunch going because I like to have a uh, mindless knit, like a TV watching mindless knit, and I like to have one that's a little more um, challenging and interesting. But this time I did not. But this wasn't so complicated that um, I couldn't do other things while knitting it. So I did bring it with me on our vacation. I did not get a lot of knitting done there, but um, I can totally knit this while watching TV because it's, it's pretty basic. It's not complicated. The other thing I'm playing with, this is my yarn that I um, dyed with the avocado a while back. It's the Stroll Fingering from Knit Picks, the Bear Stroll that I dyed with the avocado. And I really want to replace a cardigan that I have because it's, um, it's super old and it's store-bought and around the collar it's kind of yellowed a bit and I tried to get it out and I can't. Um, but I really like the style. It's a little um, almost kimono-like, I guess. It has sleeves that come to about here, but they're just there's no shaping in the sleeves. It's just kind of boxy and it's an all over lace. Um, open front with the tie cardigan. And I want something that will kind of take its place. And that one's a cream color. And this one's kind of apricot. So I think that this yarn will work. So I've been playing with different patterns. I've been looking through the um, Japanese knitting stitch bible um, and just experimenting with that or with um, just modifications of it. Here's a couple of my experiments now. So I want it kind of lacy and I don't want it too complicated and that can be a problem with this um, stitch book is that some of them are a little more complicated than I would like, especially for an all over lace. So I was considering doing like just the sleeves on top of the sleeves lace and then like a panel in the front near the opening as lace. But I think I want to do it all over lace, which means I need something that is somewhat um, simple and that each row is very easy to memorize so that each you know repeat is not super complicated like a 3-1 over and over again type thing as opposed to having a whole bunch of different stuff you have to follow every single row. So we will see what happens with that. This is probably a long-term project, project in the works. Let's see. What else was I going to talk about? Oh yes, I also want to talk about my Swiss tea pattern that's currently in testing right now. I have Three of my testers have finished and I just love their results and um, their different uses of yarn. One used a um, like a variegated yarn and one used a, um, a viscose yarn and she said it was extremely difficult to work with because it's a slippery yarn um, but she loved the finished product. So I will show those up here. And I wanted to let you guys know that um, I still need some more test knitters. I would love some more test knitters. I need test knitters for size extra large, large, and small specifically, but I will probably take just about any size just to increase my um, test knitters and um, just have more vetting of the pattern and um, more experimenting with different yarns and things like that. But um, ideally, I really want a small, a large and an extra large um, because I want to make sure all of the sizes are thoroughly covered in test knit before I publish it. So that's very exciting and it's super exciting and satisfying to see other people knit your design and um, use their own colors and see what they come up with. I love that. I guess the last thing I want to talk about, this is kind of a short podcast here, is that um, our co-op for our homeschooling group is starting up 
here um, at the end of August with all kinds of safety measures and distancing and things like that. But we are starting in person and it's only um, four hours once a week. So it's not um, a long period of time either. And we already had small class sizes. Um, I think 12 was always the max and usually it was smaller than that. So I'm not super worried about that in terms of in-class um, safety, but I um, had signed up to teach an adult class and I was waiting to the beginning of the school year to kind of offer a couple of free classes and see the interest level and all and that. So I'm not sure how that's all going to work. I think I'm going to have to postpone it just a little bit to get everybody used to all of the new safety measures and things like that. But once it gets going, crossing my fingers here, I'm really hoping that I'll be able to teach knitting class to adults um, using the Knit How book, which I told you guys this before. This is by Pom Pom, Knit How. Um, I have not gone through it other than just to like read through it and look through it. But I got recommended this by, um, I think it's River Fiber and Arts in Blacksburg, Virginia, the lady who runs that. And I really liked it. And so I think that my next knitting project might be something out of this to kind of prepare myself to teach it or to utilize this to teach knitting to adults. So I'm trying to figure out what, what I should knit next. I think most things are a worsted weight so I'm going to have to look through my stash or maybe even order something. And these are kind of small pictures, but this kind of gives an um, overview of everything that's in there. They have some fingerless gloves, which I think might be an ideal start for people because they're small and simple. Um, they also have some cute little mittens that are in here. But they even have a sweater. But I'm thinking something small. I want something to display for when I have people come into class um, or to come in to um, just check it out. But the mittens, I've never done mittens. So I think mittens might be the way to go. Because they're super cute. I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, I think that's about all I have. Um, I hope you guys are staying healthy and safe and um, just pray that you guys can be positive and this whole beginning of the school year, if you have kids, I just um, pray that it goes well for you. I know that our area is gonna start off online again, um, which I know can be tough for people, especially if they have full-time jobs. So um, I'm thinking about you guys and I hope that your life is going well and that you can find joy amongst um, the turmoil that we're going through right now. So anyways, I will see you later. Bye.